You're watching Study with Sudhir. This is your digital classroom. My name is T.S. Sudhir. We are going to be studying a chapter from Flamingo, which is the textbook for class 12 CBSE students in English. And this is called the last lesson. This is chapter number one, written by Alphonse Dodit. And this is set in the backdrop of an important chapter in history. That was when the franco prussian War ended, in which France was defeated by Prussia, not Russia, by Prussia which was led by Bismarck. Now, Prussia then consisted, for those of you who do not know, because Prussia in today's world does not exist, it basically consisted of what are today's nations of Germany, Poland and parts of Austria, right? Uh, and in this particular story, we will uh, see how the two districts of France, which are to the northeast of Paris, in the northeast corner of France and bordering modern-day Germany, called Alsace and Lorraine have passed into Prussian hands, right? And there, this particular writer has set a story of a school and the effect the political developments have on the going on at this school. And that is something very important, which is why it's very important for you to understand the historical backdrop of this story and then see and when you write your answers, it has to be in the context of what was happening in the politics of that part of France, which has now passed into Prussian hands. Okay, now I'll read through the story. Now throughout you will see that the principal character of this particular story called Hamel is referred to as M. Hamel. Now M is basically a reference to Monsieur, which in English we can refer to as Mr. So, it's basically Monsieur Hamel in the French language. His name is Hamel. I started for school very late that morning and I was in great dread of a scolding. So, also very important that this entire story has been told from the point of view, from the perspective of a child, a student at that particular school whose name is France. The child's name is France, uh, uh, F-R-A-N-Z. Uh, and the teacher's name is Hamel. So, these are the two principal characters in this particular story. And he kind of dreads going to school because he has not done what he was supposed to do. And what was he supposed to do? Because Hamel had said that he would question us on participles, right? And I did not know the first word about them. Now, Hamel was the French teacher at that particular school. Participles is basically a verb form which can also be used as an adjective or a noun. Adjective, the examples like working woman. Working is essentially a verb, but when you add to a woman, it becomes a working woman and therefore it becomes an adjective. Burnt toast, right? Or what would be the usage as a noun? Good breeding. Breeding in itself would be a verb, but when you add it to a good or bad breeding, it becomes a noun. Okay, now uh, for a moment, I thought of running away and spending the day out of doors. So, he's tempted to kind of run away, escape and not attend school and Hamel's class, uh, French class. It was so warm, so bright. So, he's kind of painting a very vivid picture of what the atmosphere is like. The birds were chirping at the edge of the woods and in the open field back of the sawmill, the Prussian soldiers were drilling. So, it's also putting in the context of what was happening politically in that part of France, which had now slipped into Prussian hands after the war. It was all much more tempting than the rule for participles, but I had the strength to resist and hurried off to school. So, though he does not want to go to school, but he kind of forces himself, does not allow himself to get tempted by all the sights and the sounds that he sees on the way from home to school. So, you kind of can pictureize what kind of an atmosphere would be at that point in time in these two towns. Now, when I passed the town hall, there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board. This paragraph is important and I'll tell you why. For the last two years, all our bad news had come from there. The lost battles, the draft, the orders of the commanding officer and I thought to myself without stopping, what can be the matter now? Now, this is the first indication you're getting that something untoward, something negative is likely to be uh, broken to you in terms of news. The bulletin board, the boy makes it very clear that this was the place where all kind of bad news actually was revealed to the people of the town. Then as I hurried, and this is the second part, then as I hurried by as fast as I could go, the blacksmith, Wachter, 
who was there with his apprentice reading the bulletin called after me. Don't go so fast, bub. You will get to your school in plenty of time. Apprentice essentially someone who is being trained on the job. Bub is a slang term, okay, for a male friend. And this is the second hint he gets that something has changed. Something has changed which he is going to discover in due course of time. First was the bulletin board which is a hint both to the reader as well as to the narrator. The second one is what the blacksmith says to the young boy saying that you don't have to be in a hurry to get to school. You will have plenty of time. I thought he was making fun of me and I reached Hamel's little garden all out of breath. So he is kind of walking very fast because he has got late. Also the worry and the anxiety and the tension of not having learnt what he was supposed to have learnt as far as the French class was concerned. Usually when school began there was a great bustle which could be heard out in the street, the opening and closing of desks, lessons repeated in unison, very loud with our hands over our ears to understand better and the teacher's great ruler rapping on the tables. You generally when you want to concentrate and you don't want to hear any of the surround sound, you will generally close your ears, right? So that's what would happen with everyone with a lot of chatter and bustle and a lot of noise essentially created from the school premises. But when he reached that particular morning, it was all so still, absolutely quiet. I had counted on the commotion to get to my desk without being seen. So he doesn't want to get noticed and he thought there will be a lot of hustle bustle, a lot of commotion, a lot of noise, a lot of confusion in which he would kind of get to his desk without being noticed, without being told that he is late for the day. But alas, it wasn't to be so because uh, everything was as quiet as a Sunday morning, which is a day of a holiday. Through the window, I saw my classmates already in their places. So he is the last to get to school, to his classroom and Hamel walking up and down with this terrible iron ruler under his arm. I had to open the door and go in before everybody. You can imagine how I blushed and how frightened I was. You can imagine doing that in your classroom, can't you? So, uh, and he was obviously uh, not very happy with the attention that he was getting because he was the last one to enter the classroom. But nothing happened. He was expecting a scolding from Hamel. He was probably expecting a reprimand in the form of the iron ruler also. But nothing happened. Hamel saw me and said very kindly, Go to your place quickly, little Franz. We were beginning without you. Saying that, you know, if you had come a little late, we would have actually started the lesson without your presence. I jumped over the bench and sat down at my desk. Not till then, when I had got a little over my fright, did I see that my teacher, our teacher, had on his beautiful green coat, his frilled shirt and the little black silk cap, all embroidered embroidered that he never wore except on inspection and on prize day. So he noticed the attire, the different attire of Hamel, Monsieur Hamel, and he realized that that was a special attire that he normally wore only either on prize distribution days or on days of the inspection when someone from outside would come to inspect the school. So it had to be something special and Franz was completely in the dark, bewildered as to why is he wearing this special attire today to school. And the school premises also seemed very strange because usually the back benches were empty. But today on the back benches, there were many people from the village, the adults who were actually occupying the back benches and that was very strange. There was Hosser with his three cornered hat, the former mayor, the former postmaster and I would refer to the former mayor and the former postmaster, the, the importance of the word former in just a bit and several others besides. Everyone looked sad and Hosser had brought an old primer. Primer in carpentry terms is something which you apply on a surface, on a wooden surface before you actually apply the paint, right? In this case, primer is used in the context of a book. So he had bought a, something of a very primary book in order to be able to understand what Hamel was going to teach that day in the French class, okay? Thumbed at the edges. So it's obviously something which had been used for over many years and he held it open on his knees with his great spectacles lying across the pages. So, you know, it, it, he had brought a book. So, in that sense, it showed a certain kind of interest and an inclination to understand and learn what Hamel was going to teach that day in the classroom. While I was wondering, now all this was a strange sight to France. While I was wondering about it all, Hamel mounted his chair 
and in the same grave and gentle tone, grave as in a serious tone, uh, which he had used to me, said, My children, this is the last lesson I shall give you. The order has come from Berlin to teach only German in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine. The new master comes tomorrow. This is your last French lesson. I want you to, to be very attentive. So that's the big news that this is going to be Hamel's last French class. And from the next day, it is going to be German, which is going to be taught in the classrooms of Alsace and Lorraine uh, and not French, which is why France now realizes that all these people have come to attend the last class because that's their way of paying respect to this teacher who has been teaching at that particular school for the last 40 long years. Okay, so that's a lifetime of a service to a school. What a thunderclap these words were to me. It was like, you know, it hit him like a bolt from the blue. He was completely ignorant about this development. And the significance or rather the political and the social significance of this change which has been made, I will explain to you in a bit. Also, I refer to the words former. Former also in a sense refers to the passing of an era. You are no longer in that post. Former mayor, former postmaster, everyone is former in the sense that they are no longer in positions of authority in that particular position. And same is the case even with Alsace and Lorraine which has now passed on from French hands into Prussian hands. So in that sense, everything has changed. There is the change which has happened in these two significant towns on the border of France and Prussia, modern day Germany. If you look at the map which has been given in your textbook. Oh, the wretches, that's what they had put up on the bulletin board. So he's now able to connect what was put on the bulletin board what was it that the blacksmith had told him and why was it that all these people were also sitting inside the classroom. He's able to connect the dots and make sense of what had happened before he entered the classroom. My last French lesson. Why I hardly knew how to write. I should never learn anymore. I must stop there then. So he's almost feeling relieved that he no longer has to learn French. And then there is something of a change that occurs inside him. He says, oh, how sorry I was for not learning my lessons, for seeking birds' eggs or going sliding on the sar. So, while he has been having a good time, he has been ignoring learning the French language. My books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago, so heavy to carry, my grammar and my history of the scenes were old friends now that I couldn't give up. So, now he's feeling almost a sense of connect, a sense of fondness for all those French books and the content inside those books. And Hamel too, the idea that he was going away, that I should never see him again, made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky he was. Cranky as in someone who is moody and who is given to some kind of showing of a temper. And he feels bad that he will never get to meet Hamel ever again in his life. And that makes him sad. Poor man, it was in honor of this lesson that he was wearing his Sunday clothes. And I understood why the old men of the village were sitting there too at the back of the room. It was because they were sorry too. They had not gone to school more. It was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more. They were no longer part of France. They will no longer have to learn the French language. They were feeling sorry about the fact that they had not given French the respect uh, that it deserved as a language, that they had not gone enough to school while Hamel was teaching sincerely for the last four decades at that particular school. Right? Uh, earlier, there is a reference to the sawmill. Um, in that, uh, in, on, on the earlier page, sawmill is essentially a factory where logs are sawn into plants for further use in furniture or even in railway compartments, right? I missed mentioning that. While I was thinking of all this, I heard my name called. So, Hamel calls out his name. It was his turn to recite. What would I have not given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the participle all through? Very loud and clear and without one mistake. But I got mixed up on the first words and stood there holding on to my desk and my heart beating and not daring to look up. So he's scared that he's now in for a severe scolding. 
I heard Hamel say to me, I won't scold you little Franz, you must feel bad enough, see how it is. Every day we have said to ourselves that we have time and I will learn it tomorrow. But tomorrow, in this particular case, is never going to come because it's going to end with today. There's going to be no tomorrow as far as the learning of the French language is concerned because from tomorrow you will be learning a new language which is going to be German, right? And he says that's the great trouble with ulcers. She puts off learning till tomorrow and he talks about the entire town of ulcers which never took learning of French seriously, right? Uh, and now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you, how is it you pretend to be Frenchmen and you can neither speak nor write your own language. But you are not the worst poor little France. We have a great deal to reproach ourselves with. Reproach means scold ourselves for. Your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn. They preferred to put you to work at a farm or at the mills, as in the sawmills, so as to have a little more money, suggesting child labor being prevalent in those parts of erstwhile France and I even I have to blame so in that sense he's pretty honest about the fact that not just you not just your parents but even I am to blame because on many occasions have, didn't I send you to water my flowers instead of learning your lessons or when I wanted to go fishing did I not give you all a holiday so he's kind of being very honest about the fact that each one of us is at fault for you people not having learned the language well enough. Then from one thing to the another, Hamel went on to talk about the French language saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world, the clearest, the most logical and I can tell you French do take a lot of pride in their language, in their history, in their culture. That we must guard it among us and never forget it because when a people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language these are important lines please mark them it is as if they had the key to their prison then he opened a grammar and read us our lesson i was amazed to see how well i understood it so today was a different day because he was focusing he was concentrating on the class and he was himself surprised that he was able to understand it very very well so he believes that if you know the language, if you understand your history and culture and your ethos, you will be able to ensure that you are never enslaved. So in that sense, that is the key to their prison in the sense that if you are not, if you are well enlightened about your entire culture and language, you will never be prisoners to anyone, you will never be anyone's slaves. But in now, because they have not done so, he believes that's also some kind of a contributory factor to why Alsace and Lorraine have passed into Prussian hands.